All right, back to fermentation. Thank you for watching Pub Travels, uh, trying to experiment and mess around with fermentation. Uh, health benefits to fermented foods, I can get in my soapbox another time. But uh, since I only have 30% battery, I need to get going on this one. All right, so I'm actually going to take, I've got a fermentation kind of weight in this. Um, let's go back to what we have here. These are dried chile arbols. Chile arbol is one of my favorite peppers. Uh, really, really love uh, the flavor. It can be ripping hot in heat and uh, just overall delicious. And I was excited. So I did some research. Can dry chilies be fermented? The answer was yes. The recipes that I saw also included a little bit of garlic. So we're gonna throw this in here. We just did two cloves of garlic. I was a little bit worried about this just being a two week ferment because dried chilies, their skin can be a little bit tougher. I've read that tougher skins are harder to ferment, but to me, um, it smells really, really nice. The fermentation process, I think, kind of sweetens things up a little bit. Um, I've read that it can take a little bit of the heat out. And I'm not getting like a big waft of heat of capsaicin. And here we go. So two-week ferment on a chile out of bowl. And I'm going to drain off the brine. Believe it or not, the chilies have taken on a much brighter color. They're a little bit deeper, richer looking now that they've been rehydrated and fermented. They are indeed beautiful. And what's very interesting is because all of this was uh, down underneath the liquid, there's really not that much liquid. So I would have to imagine that a lot of that 2.5% brine has been absorbed into the chili out of bowl. I do want to save this brine because it looks really amazing. I may even just taste the brine to see where we're at. And of course, we get chilies all over the counter. We may have to use some of this brine. All right, so we've got our blender. We've got our fermented chile out of bowls. Dried chilies or thick skin chilies can take a little bit longer to ferment. The brine was actually from a red jalapeno ferment that I did a couple weeks ago. And I'm kind of experimenting a little bit with reusing the brine. And we're gonna, uh, typically with a dried chili, everything's been taken out. All the moisture's been taken out. I chose to actually use the brine from the fresh chilies, the fresh jalapenos, and we're gonna add, and that's how I fermented this. We're gonna go ahead and see what this tastes like. I can't wait to see if I can experiment with some chile moritas. So let's go ahead and buzz this up because the dogs are getting a little crazy. Let's get this done quickly. Here we go, let's buzz this up. It's gonna need a little liquid and give us some help. So part of me wants to use a little bit of water because I don't want the brine to be too salty. I don't want our sauce to be too salty. It's a two and a half percent brine, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. We're going to use some of this just to help the blender get the chilies buzzing. I can almost tell already and I could be wrong, but my nose is telling me that they don't smell like a chile arbol anymore. Something's a little, something a little different's going on, and I believe that's the ferment. Let's check it out. I want to start out slow, let the blades get whatever you have in your blender working. Once you notice not much is moving around, you want to definitely get in there with a spatula or something. And I do have a contraption that goes with this. 
but I think for the sake of everybody may not have a blender like this, we'll go ahead and keep working. I feel that it's still kind of dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more of our brine back into it. You can tell it's starting to go a little bit, starting to buzz up. Trying to mix it up a little bit more. And I'm not looking for a thick, pasty sauce either, so I might add a little bit more of the brine. We don't have much left. Who knows, we might end up using all of it. But I do want those chilies to start to grind up. Now you can kind of see, hopefully you can see on camera, there's almost like a little funnel factor here. I think a little bit more liquid is going to get us to where we need to be. But again, I'm not looking for a, a dry paste. I want kind of a salsa-like. So after we get the rest of this brine in here, I may actually add some water to get to the texture we're looking for. I'm just going to add all of that. There's not much left. There's probably a quarter of a cup. And let's see where this gets us. Let's mix it up a little bit. Still pretty pasty. So I definitely think we're going to end up adding some water. So much for saving the brine for another ferment. But I really do love the idea of this. All right, I've got a quarter of a cup of water. I'm sorry, half a cup of water. So here we go. We added a uh, half a cup of water. You want to get that liquid down to the blades. That's where you get to move things around a little bit better. There we go. That's, if you can see that on camera, it's kind of what we're, what we're looking for. And again, I think a little bit more, a little bit more water. There we go. So that's looking beautiful. I'm gonna buzz that up a little bit, making sure that all the seeds, everything in there, ground up real nice. And believe it or not, Believe it or not, I might add a little bit more water. It's looking really good so far. All right, so this is kind of pretty cool. This is looking like a really nice little paste. So you can see it's kind of pasty. But let's taste it, because I'm curious about the heat. Uh, we've added about a cup of water just to get get it going in the blender. Mm. The heat kicks in. It's really interesting. I love the chile out of bowl, but it the heat kind of came first, then the flavor of the chile out of bowl. And then it just wallops you with some heat. So this is a, a hot, 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 hot ferment. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. All right, based on the, on the texture here, I'm gonna go with just a full cup of water because it's also very hot. And it's definitely different. There's that tang from the ferment. It's not straight chile al bowl which can be good. Or I really missing the, the chili at bowl. So maybe fermenting a dry chili isn't a great thing to do. I don't know, we're still working on this. Let's figure it out. So we've definitely got enough liquid in here now to really get the blender going. I really wanna buzz it up. I want more of a sauce rather than some of the chunks of the dried chilies and the seeds. Let's crank this up again. 
So stir this up a little bit. Definitely still a nice, nice paste, but a little bit more for looking for. And believe it or not, let's go ahead and give it a taste. I, I'm gonna add some more liquid and stretch this out because I want it thinner and I don't want to rip my head off. It's chili out of bowl. It's a, it's a pretty hot chili. And I haven't added any salt because we're still using the 2.5% brine that we fermented the chilies in. Yeah. In the front, you get kind of what I'm going to call a fermented funk. You get the bitter probably because there's all the seeds in it also. And then a heat. So fermenting a chile arbol for me may not be the right thing because I love the flavor of it. I'm losing that chile arbol flavor. It's just hot. So this might be a good thing to maybe add to some sauces where you want or, uh, you know, or you just want to add some, some heat. All right, so I'm going to add, believe it or not, one cup of uh, water because I want it to be thinner. I'm not crazy about ripping your face off hot sauces, so I just want it to be a really nice flavorful sauce. Again, we're losing that smokiness and fruitiness. We're getting a little bit of tang and then the heat's kind of just rolling right onto my tongue. All right. So still, I'm going to stop it here because I really, I don't, I'm just going to take me, you know, a couple of months to get through this sauce or I'm going to have to give it away to some friends. But now we're getting into like a sauce that you can ladle over some uh, enchiladas or put it over some tacos. So I don't know if you can see that, but I like the texture. I like that we've buzzed it down pretty good with the, the blender and the blades. Let's check the heat one more time. I'm not gonna add any salt because we had the two and a half percent brine during the fermentation process. Wow, that's good. You get a little bit of smokiness, but geez louise, it's got some heat. Uh, this is a really, really, really nice hot sauce. Super simple uh, fermentation. We're adding a lot of the healthy goodness from good bacteria, lactobacillus. And uh, I'm gonna kind of end this here because I like the texture. It's really nice and you can kind of see how it pours out. Really nice sauce. Has some nice flavor, really nice heat. Some very nice heat. And uh, this is uh, Pub Travels experimenting with fermentation. So thanks for watching, please click like, share, and subscribe. Those are the dogs. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Wait, you gotta plug in the Vitamix.